I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Once upon a time, in a small kingdom of tiny cottages, babbling brooks and rolling hills, lived a little witch. A middle-sized wolf, and two giants. Their awesome footsteps echoed like thunder throughout the land. Once upon a time, there were two giants. One, two, and in that order. One had long golden hair, cuddled his teddy and sucked his thumb. It was amazing, therefore, that he thought of himself as the toughest giant in the world. <laughs> the other, his cousin giant, lived in the freezing north near Accrington and liked to do tough manly things like breed racing pigeons and eat them. One day, while the golden haired giant was pulling up trees with his bare hands, a pigeon flew down with a message. Not being able to read, before eating it, he handed it to his mother. It said, Fee, fi, fo, bum. That will not visit you, sucker thumb. This filled him with dread. Don't worry, said his mother. I have a good mind to fix that great northern oaf once and for all. The golden-haired giant carried on pulling up trees, but his attention was on matters north of Watford. A few days later, the golden-haired giant noticed a huge footprint in the muddy road. Then another, and another. This meant only one thing. His northern cousin must be in the area. He lumbered off home to tell his mother. Mommy! He might pinch my teddy. He won't pinch anything, not even your bottom said his mother as he rolled out some pastry on a kitchen table. How is making pies going to help me beat this giant? You'll see, she said, as he filled the pastry, not with her usual gristle and vegetable pasta sell by date, but with stones, rusty nails, horseshoes, and snooker balls. However, she did fill one pie with meat and vegetables and marked it with a cross to remind her which was which. Now it's off to bed with you. But I haven't had my bedtime story, Mummy. So she read him the one about the wolf and the seven kids. By the time she'd reached the end, he was fast asleep, sucking his thumb, glad he wasn't a goat. As he slept, she went and found his christening bonnet 
and gently tied it round his head. Then she went down to the kitchen. Suddenly, there was a fearful hammering on her door, shaking all the cups on the dresser. The door collapsed. And there before her stood the giant from the north, known to his friends as Accrington Stanley. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I'm the giant from the north, e by gum. The giant demanded to know where his cousin was hiding. Hiding? It's a good hiding you'll be getting if he finds you here. You'll be curtains. Curtains? inquired the mentally challenged elf. Well, I can make. You can feed me. The giant had smelt the pastry cooking and she placed a piping hot pie in front of him. Five of his front teeth broke off and dropped to the floor. What sort of pie do you call this? Perhaps you've got some gristle here. Try another. And seven more choppers flew across the room. Mommy! Mommy! came a cry. That's my grandson. You've woken him up with all that howling. He'll be wanting his pie, I expect. This time, Dr. T, said the giant as he followed her upstairs to the bedside. There, there, cooled mother, as she panted him. His pie marked with a cross. If my grandson is strong enough to eat my pies, imagine how strong his father will be. He'll make mincemeat and curtains out of you. Let's see how you ate that pie. Open wide. Little baby don't have teeth. This one does roared the golden-haired giant as he sprang at his cousin who dashed down the stairs with gigantic steps headed north to Accrington. Taking the Bolton Bypass for which he was arrested by the CID. For the rest of his days, the toothless giant could only eat soft foods like mushy peas. He gradually got weaker and smaller until he almost disappeared. Bee, pie, bo bum. I got that small. I'm called Tom Tom. Have a story to tell about him sometime. There's more wolves and more witches and more giants here next.